All right, it is time to finish this quilt. Finish, let's do it. Hey everyone, Kristen Som here, and today we are going to finish our Red, White, and Bloom quilt. We have been working on this for a while and it got pushed out because of holiday projects and now we are finally finishing it. So yesterday we finished up our um, backing. We did our backing and our binding. Isn't that pretty? I'm so happy to have that done. So the other thing that I did is I made a label. So I feel strongly about having a label on our quilt projects because it will leave a legacy. So once my grandchildren have children, they're going, somebody's going to have this quilt down the road. And so you want something that's got your name on it that showed the generations and the legacy that you're leaving behind someday. So I made this quilt label and I'm pretty happy about it. Very happy about it. Isn't that cute? So I made it, um, using a coloring page book and I scanned it using my luminaire scanning machine and I um, stitched it out in variegated thread to show all the different colors. I made a star border for our red white and bloom quilt and then I used three different um, fonts to be able to um, add in made by and then a name and a date. So I, I love this and I stitched it on white felt. So what I'm going to do for anyone that wants this quilt label and has made a donation during the process of this quilt, a donation to Christian Creates for our tutorials, for the equipment, for Oh boy, all of the video software and the um, the camera, the lighting equipment, uh, the microphone, all of the things that, that I need to be able to make these tutorials possible. If you have added a donation into our group, I am going to send you this label. Just let me know that you have done the red, white, and bloom quilt and let me know the format that your machine uses and your email address so I can send that to you. I will add a link here for PayPal. Um, you can do a PayPal donation if you haven't already done one during the time of this project, or you can use Venmo. Venmo is also an option if you choose, but either way, you can make your own quilt label. It's not that hard to do. Um, I added a placement and tack down for the uh, felt. Um, and then I used that to stitch on because I hand stitched it on after the fact. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy about it. I'm, I'm very happy that I got this done and learned something new. So anyway, um, make a quilt label and let me see it. I want to see how you're doing.
All right, so it's time to work on the embellishments. We're gonna do one at a time, go through all of it step by step, just like we have this entire project. So the first one is on page 36. It is the patriotic pinwheels, the patriotic pinwheels. So we use these in the glass jars, the bottle, bottle jars, bottles, bottle caps. Um, so in these jars, see the little stick here we're gonna have our our pinwheel um, coming out of that so two of them will be there let me see I don't remember where the third one is um, so one thing is that on the page they have it they show it as three all the same but on the quilt itself they show it as um, two are done with the blue um, stitching on the outside of the patriotic pinwheel and then one has red stitching and there are three bottles so three bottles so um i'll show you when we get there but one is up here at the top and then another one is down here at the bottom and then the red one is here and like i said um it shows in the picture on the on page 36 it shows them all the same but on here it does show that one has red stitching so I am gonna do that I, I want two to be um, blue and two to and one to be red so I'm gonna bring you over to the computer and show you how to merge them together with keeping them that part separate but in the meantime let's go over what we need to make our pinwheels so there is a file on our CD for making the patriotic pinwheels in the hoop so what we're going to need is pinwheel a fabric i'm assuming that's the red but let me make sure let's see here all right so pinwheel a fabric is the red it's the red hound's tooth we want three of these i did back mine with fusible stabilizer that's completely optional um, i just figured it would help to not have it fraying so the red one is pinwheel A, and we want this to be three by three, three pieces that are three by three. And like I said, I did back mine with fusible stabilizer, completely optional for the pinwheel A. And then pinwheel B is the blue with lines all over it, and you want three pieces of that as well, also in a three by three. Three by three for pinwheel B fabric. All right, and then we want flexifoam. And our flexifoam, I believe it came in our embellishment kit. I don't recall now. I did that prep video quite a while ago now. But the pinwheel, I'm sorry, the pinwheel flexifoam is going to be three by three also, three pieces of three by three. And I'll show you how we're gonna do this. One of the fabrics is gonna go on the back of the hoop, one on the top. We're gonna do the flexifoam first. I'll go over it all step by step. The other thing that we will need for our pinwheels after they are all done. We're gonna need a hot glue gun, by the way, um, and also the little buttons. So the little buttons, notice that there's um, white, yellow, and red. But if you look on the back, they're all white, all right? So some of them are turned over, but there's, I believe there's just one of the red and all the rest are yellow dots with white backgrounds. And so we're gonna use the white background for the pinwheels um, in the center of the pinwheel. So you're just gonna turn it over. So easy to do. We'll use the yellow ones later on the flower blocks, I believe, if I recall. But anyways, just a warning. I was wrong about the buttons. I thought they were all white and yellow on one side and white on the other side, but I was wrong. There are three that are just white, so make sure to use those for your um, patriotic pinwheels and these for the flower blocks, if I recall. But anyway, so we're going to need three of these in white for the um, the pinwheels. So let's go ahead and get started on that. And like I said, I'm going to bring you over to the computer in case you choose to merge them. I'm going to put all three in one hooping. I believe I can do it in a five by seven hoop. Um, and I'm not. I'm going to be careful what I'm merging because I want. Um, one of them to be a little bit different with the satin stitching a, a, a different color i want one of two of them to be blue and one of them to be red so totally up to you how you do it it would be faster if you did them all the same but i'm going to separate mine a little bit so let's go over to the computer and one quick note we are going to want wash away stabilizer for the pinwheel blocks wash away stabilizer by kimber bell Hey 
Hey everyone, so I'm on my computer now and I am going to show those that want to um, merge extra pinwheels together and when hooping, I'll show you how to do that. So I am going to open up from Brilliance Essentials. That's the embroidery software that I prefer. Um, I'm currently on my 6x10 hoop. You can see it down here at the bottom because I was working on my label. So I'm going to go to this preferences folder and I'm going to choose my 5x7 hoop. I think I can fit these in my 5x7 and say OK. And then I'm going to go to this compass button and click H to zoom in. So we're going to start by bringing in the patriotic pinwheel. So go to merge stitch file and then um, let's see red, white and blue quilt. And we're going to look for the pinwheels. Right there, patriotic pinwheel four by four. Double click on that. It will go to the center. I'm gonna take it and move it up here. And it definitely looks like I can fit three in one hooping without a problem. So notice that there is default one blue. This is gonna be the placement for our um, flexifoam, I'm assuming. And then a uh, tack down. And then we will do that first um, fabric which is going to be let's see there's going to be there's the satin stitching so the satin stitching this is what I was telling you about that I'm going to do two of them in blue and one of them in red so I don't want them all to merge together um, but all of these placement and tack downs will be fine to merge so I'm going to go ahead I'm going to click on the whole design and I'm going to say control C there's none that are the same color, so I don't have to worry about any color changes. And I'm going to say control V like victory to paste and it goes right on top of the first one. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just move it down here. I'm using my mouse and I'm going to just bring it down to the edge here. So our fabrics are three by three. This design, you can see the size right here. It's two and three sixteenths by two and three sixteenths. So there won't be too much overlap a little bit, but not too bad. All right, and then I'm going to say control V like victory to paste again, and I'm going to take that one and I'm going to bring it down here. But remember, I want one of them to be a different satin stitch. So this last one here, this, this is the third design, and I want to work on this last part. So what I'm doing is I'm clicking outside of the design right here in the workspace, or you can do it out here and anywhere to deselect so that you're not getting all of it. And then on this last one, three, four, I'm just going to change the color. Um, I'm going to choose a red. doesn't matter at all what color. Oh, that didn't do it. Sorry. Let's see. Let's do that again. Search red. Go. There we go. Sorry about that. All right. And I'm going to choose desire because that's one of the colors in our, I believe that's one of the colors in our thread kit. And, but it again, doesn't matter. All right. So I'm just changing it so that it will not do a color sort for, it will not join with that one. That one will be a separate item. So let's go ahead and do a color sort and see how that works out. So I'm going to go to utility color sort. And we currently have 12 color steps. You can see it down here in the right hand corner. And then when you do your color sort, it says it's reduced it by seven color changes. Let's see if that's accurate, if it did what we want it to do. Um, but first, make sure that your force applique material are not selected. RHS is not selected and tolerance is at zero. So I'm going to click new view and that will open another tab. We're on untitled one now. When I click new view, it brings it to untitled two. So we can still see this untitled one. If anything's not the way that we want it to be, then we can go to back to this one to start again. So in untitled two, let's just quickly go through and make sure it did what we think it should do. So there is the first one for um, all three of them. And when two are all joined, that's perfect. One, three are all joined as well. <clears throat> and then one, four, we have the satin stitch of the first two in blue and then the satin stitch of red in the last one. So that worked out exactly perfectly. So I'm going to go ahead and do a file, save stitch file as. <clears throat> and I am going to go to red, white, and bloom, embroidery files, <clears throat> Pez, red, white, and bloom. And it's the patriotic pin pinwheels. So I'm just going to say pinwheels times three. I'm going to put a space in there just because I feel like it. Pinwheels times three. Save. 
All right, and then my machine's not on right now, or I would save it to my machine. Um, you could also save it to a USB and bring it over to your machine. So that was super easy. So let's get started on our first embellishment. We will get these pinwheels done. So a little tip, when I show you the picture with me pointing at the bobbin saying change the bobbin, don't be a rebel like me, do it. So my thought was I don't care what the back of the pinwheel is going to look like, I don't need to worry about changing the bobbin. You do. <laughs> so learn from my mistake. What happens with a pinwheel is we pull down the edges and those edges are from the back. So you can see I have some bobbin stitching because I didn't change my bobbin. So learn from my mistake and change your bobbin. everyone so now that we have our patriotic pinwheels done it is time to move on to the dimensional leaves stems and cherries that is on page 37 so real quick we just need two pieces of this green fabric it's green with swirlies on it do not back this. I mentioned this in the fabric prepping video. You do not want these stabilized. So when I made these little um, leaves on our vintage boardwalk quilt, I stabilized them and I ended up having to redo them. I could not tie the knot. It makes it too tight if they're stabilized. So don't stabilize your fabric. You want this fabric to be six by two, two pieces, six by two for the dimensional leaves. All right, or stems, or I'm not sure what it's called. But, um, and then we also need for this one, the twine. So the twine is in, in its own little package in the embellishment kit. We want um, one piece that is 10 inches long of the twine. It's brown and white striped. And then we need the two wool felt balls. These are gonna be our cherries, all right? We will attach these on. So let's go ahead and get started with these.
right, the next part is the pole flowers. So they come like this in our embellishment kit. There are three of them, the teal, red, and white up there. The teal one we're gonna cut in half. That's our chair shaken. Um, we are going to put the one of the teal ones on the red, white, and bloom block that's on page 16 with that red button. Remember I told you that we have one red button. It's a little red gingham button. Um, that one will be with the red, white, and bloom block. And then the other three flowers will be in the jar of flowers block. And I will try to share photos of the process. The teal one, like I said, we're going to cut that in half. All the other ones, it does not say that. So I'm assuming that they will be um, larger maybe. But anyway, we'll get started on the jar of flowers and the red, white, and bloom pull flowers next. All right, cut your the teal one in half so that you have two pieces put one aside tie a knot on one end and on the end that doesn't have a knot find the end piece there's this little string here and you're just going to pull that string to create this um, gathered flower just keep pulling till it gets to the end and don't let it get through that knot and then once we have it all the way that we want it, then we will tie that into a knot. Just move it around until you have it looking like a flower as you want it, and then tie the ends into a knot. I hope that helps. Oh, that's so cute. the pole flowers oh boy how cute are these so one thing I did differently on mine um, you're supposed to have a knot on one end and pull the other end to the knot and I actually undid the knot on the end and um, what I did is I pulled from both ends like just pushed it across on both ends so that I had this long tail on both ends and then I used that to sew into the quilt to, to knot it off that's that was my little thing my little tip of what I did um, but either way will work for sure but I found it a lot easier to have the long tail on each end and then just push it up through each end so that I could use those tails to tie it down to my quilt. And then I also knotted the, the three of them together. I don't know if you can see this. Let's see, right there. So the, I found that to be easier to have the extra tail. So that's my little tip on the pull flowers. And oh boy, they are darn cute. All right, are you ready for more? So I counted up the embellishments. So there are eight sets of embellishments. We're on number four now. This is the dimensional fabric cherries, basically the yo-yos. So for the yo-yos, I wanna point something out. I found something that is really going to be helpful. This is called Dritz template sheets. And you can draw on it, hopefully you can see that, and it's a template that we can use to cut our fabric and to um, keep it for next time. I thought that was pretty helpful. So another thing is that in the directions it says that if you have the Clover um, Yo-Yo Maker in size large, this that will work for this as well. So that's one thing that you can use. I will add a link for the Yo-Yo Maker from Clover here so that you can use it for future projects. And I'll also add a link for this template sheets because I'm gonna use it on the banner that we're gonna do in a little bit as well. So I thought this was pretty cool. I actually went through everything I own twice to be able to find this because I knew I bought it and, and I couldn't remember where on earth I put it and I finally found it at the end. I'm so happy. So I'll add a link for these. They are called uh, template sheets by Dritz and um, like I said they're pretty ha pretty helpful as far as it being a, a template that we can write on and use to cut. I'm going to cut this out and then put it on my fabric. 
So I'll go over the full details of how to do this, but the fabric cherries are on page 38 and there are two fabrics. I did not stabilize these. I would not recommend stabilizing these like I mentioned in the fabric prep video. So the first one is has cherries on it. How cute is that? And this one we want four and a half by four and a half. This is cherry A. Cherry A is a cherry fabric. And then for cherry B, it is a red houndstooth. And this one also four and a half by four and a half and not stabilized. All right. So these two fabrics, we're going to do a running stitch around them. I don't think I've ever made a yo-yo. I might have if they were on another Kimberbell quilt. I seem to think maybe I did at some point, but I don't recall it any, at all. So this will be interesting to say the least. So we'll do a running stitch around it um, and I'll add photos of all the information, um, but we need two of these and we're going to put them on um, the block that had the stem on it. I don't recall what that one was called, um, but I will add full details. Um, here it is on page 14, the cherries block page 14 we will add the completed yo-yos onto the cherries block all right so let's go ahead and get started Time for our fifth set of embellishments. This one is an easy one. We're going to sew on these five buttons onto our quilt and I'll share in photos where everything goes. Right, the sixth part there are eight embellishments we're on number six now so the this one is to do the five yellow dotted yellow with white dots on them buttons onto the flower blossom blocks and um, five of those and I will add a photo so that you know exact placement Time for our seventh embellishment. We are almost done. It's after midnight and I am determined to finish this quilt today. So for number seven, we are going to do the parade truck banner. So for that, we need uh, two pieces of fabric. So this, the little uh, dark blue with little petal flowers on it. I did stabilize mine. I decided that that would be better so that they don't um, fray but it will be a little bit harder to get it to close around the twine. So uh, th it does say in the directions to use hot glue anyway though, so I think it'll be fine. So your choice if you decide to stabilize it or not. So the dark blue petal fabric, we want to be three by two, and this is for pennant A, dimensional pennant A, and we will make two, I think it's two out of these, let's see. So from Penance A, we will actually make three pieces of the banner, um, and I'll show you about that in just a moment. So this one, um, three 
by two for the fabric. And then this lighter blue fabric is the light blue one with all the words all over it. And that one, same thing, three by two. I did stabilize mine, totally optional. Um, and we will make two banner pieces from pennant B. This is pen, dimensional pennant B fabric, three by two. And then the other thing that we need is that twine. So it's brown and white striped twine. We're gonna need a 24 inch piece and then we will cut this, subcut it into two pieces that are 10 inches long and one piece that is four inches long. And the 10 inch ones we're gonna tie into a little bow both of the two 10 inch pieces and then the four inch will be for that banner that we will put on our truck. All right, now in the book, there is this little drawing of a little pennant piece. So you need to um, trace that onto something that you can use for the fabric. And again, I'm going to use this. I don't know if you could, there you can see it. All right. So um, this is that Dritz template sheets and it's, it's nice for this type of purpose, especially. So I'll add a link here again, as long as I have, I can only do a few links. I'll make sure to um, add it under the notes if the link above doesn't work. So I drew um, from the, I just traced it onto this um, template paper. Um, it's not paper, template. And then I am going to use that to cut my uh, banner pieces, the pennant banner pieces on the fabric. So let's go ahead and get started with number seven of our embellishments. Like I said, you need the twine and the two fabrics and um, the little banner piece. All right, let's get started. Okay, it's almost 3 a.m. and I am determined to finish this quilt tonight. The last step is putting in the fairy lights. So I was looking through the directions and trying to figure this all out. And I have to warn you, I don't see how we would get the lights in underneath the vinyl. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to poke it straight through the vinyl. But I haven't started yet, so if I figure out a way to make it work, great. But I... I'm not super invested in determining to make sure to get it underneath the vinyl. I'm thinking through the vinyl, but we'll see. So um, we just need the fairy lights and the pockets, which actually I just dropped mine. It's late, sorry. <laughs> All right, so um, to make the pockets, we need this blue um, fabric and we need four pieces that are three and a half by four and a half three and a half by four and a half, four pieces, and then we need the fairy lights. This is to make the pockets, and I'll show you how to do that when we get there in, in photos. So the fairy lights, there are two in the packet that came with our embellishment kit, and we will use both of them because they're on two separate sides of the quilt that we need the fairy lights. Um, and I'm going to put the pocket, I'm going to make the pocket after I do the fairy lights so that it can be near the fairy lights rather than having strings going across the back of the quilt. So in the past, we have done fairy lights on um, bench pillows and we do it on the inside of the quilt before I, we may have already added the backing, but either way it's inside, you just turn it inside out. So this is a whole different ball game. So I, I'm, my goal is to try to have the pocket be as close to the fairy lights as possible so there aren't strings all over the place um, from the fairy lights and to see how to get them in through the back of the quilt and through all of the fun stuff, batting and all of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I will add photos along the way to share information and any tips and things that I learn along the way. All right, let's finish this. All right, one quick tip, make sure to take this little piece out um, to be able to get your fairy lights to work. Pull it out. Yep, there we go. 
and then turn it on and yay it works i actually had one bead defective um, my very first one on my very first bench pillow so i'm pretty happy to see them lit up all right time to get started all right so for the fairy lights that are not under the jar um, you're just going to take your awl or whatever you're using to poke through from the front is the easiest obviously since we've already got our hole that we made before so just straight through to the back and that makes it very easy um, to start with those all right straight through um, it does say in the directions to use fray check on the back of your quilt for that hole that you're making so that it doesn't make it further um, and you can also use your scissors, fine tip scissors like these to make it a little wider if you need. You should have already done that on the front from the earlier tutorial, so we should be all good for um, poking the little light through. One other little tip, after you get the little fairy light through, um, fold it, bend it down um, or up or whatever, but bend it to give it a little kink so that it doesn't come back out. Just a quick little tip. If you bend it down, it'll stay better. I don't know if you can see it on the light, but how cute. Pretty fun. All right, and then just keep doing that. We're gonna keep getting each of these little fairy lights in. Mm -hmm. 